We switched to a event-driven architecture. Now we can't debug anything. Oh boy, here we go. Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com and that post was shared with me from a member of my channel where a team goes all in on event-driven architecture. And the thing is, they're not wrong, but it's not directly because of event-driven architecture. Rather, it's their misunderstanding and how they were applying it. So let's break down the five pain points that they had, why they had that pain, and how you can avoid it. Let's add some context to where they started. So they said they had a REST-based system, really just mean HTTP likely, where they had services calling other services. So we have a client make a request to service A, maybe that's hit in the database, then service A might call service B, did call something external, now service A calls service C, it has a database likely, and then maybe even service C calls service D till we get all the way back to return our response back to the client. And if that sounds like a disaster, well it was. They said they had a spaghetti mess of cascading HTTP calls, versioning nightmares or between contracts of all these different services, in a very brittle orchestration layer. Before I get into their first pain point, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event data, data platform that feeds real-time business-critical data with historical context and fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. So the first problem is tracing, specifically in an asynchronous workflow. So they're saying it ended at Kafka. So for example, their existing system that was all HTTP based, it was front end, maybe calling the ordering service, which called the payment service, which called the email service. And using something like OpenTelemetry and having Zipkin, Jaeger, et cetera, they could see that full flow. With Kafka, however, they were stating that, okay, you have the order service, it produces an event, and then you have all these different other services listening to specific topics like the payment service, the email service, the inventory service. That completely broke for them the visibility into what was actually happening a part of that workflow. 100% this is a pain. You need good visibility and good tracing in any distributed application. Absolutely. However, OpenTelemetry works just as good in an asynchronous system as it does with a synchronous system like they were doing with HTTP between services. This shouldn't be a problem. This is likely a tooling problem that they had. If they went from something a little bit more mature of a web framework that just had this built in, it probably just worked out of the box for them. And it should work out of the box for them, depending on the tooling that they're using with whatever asynchronous messaging. This is 100% should be a solved problem. They just might not have been using the proper tooling or as much as mature tooling. And I often see this when people choose to use the SDKs directly to whatever type of messaging system, event log, message broker that they're using, rather than trying to leverage some type of messaging library that will have this built right in. So to me, this is a tooling issue. This is kind of a solved problem. Problem number two is that dead letter queues turned into garbage dumps. They sound helpful, a way to isolate failed events, but in reality, they became a graveyard of mystery failures. Dead letter queues are great, but they're just storage. So if we have a queue and we have some type of consumer that's picking that message up, let's say it's doing part of processing that message and needs to call some external service, that's failing. Then we probably have some, like they mentioned, a back off with a retry, still failing. So then we have a dead letter queue, just storage, that we're gonna place our message over there. Later on, maybe manually, we can pick that message back up and retry processing it. A dead letter queue without any way to expect the message, replay the message, or see what errors or exceptions are occurring when you're processing that message, yeah, they're a black hole. They're not gonna be any, they're not useful at all. You need visibility into why the message is failing. You need to be able to correlate that message with the error or exception that's actually occurring. Do you need to fix something in your code? Is it actually a poison message where it's never gonna work? Was there actually just a failure when I was calling that external service that's just transient? And if I call it now, since that service is up, it will succeed. You need visibility into the failure and into the message itself. Problem number three, fire and forget equals debug and regret. I like that. Rest is like ordering at a restaurant. You place an order and wait for confirmation. Uh, you sure about that? I often use a restaurant to explain asynchronous workflows. You arrive at a restaurant and whoever's there greeting you then seats you at a table. 
They don't sit there and wait for you to order. No, they go back and perform some other type of action, which is greeting somebody else and bringing somebody else to another table. It's all about asynchronous workflows. If you have a client and you can think of the wait staff, maybe they're taking your order, deal, they're dealing with kind of that point of sale system, placing your order, putting in so the kitchen actually understands, oh, there's an order, there's, a, there's something that we actually have to do. They pick that message up asynchronously. They start cooking your meal. When that order is actually up, there's a message probably placed it's doing the exact same thing to let the wait staff know or somebody that's their role that they're gonna be picking up in that order, maybe entering it and returning it back to the client. It's full of asynchrony. You just need to embrace it. The biggest red flag, which was very telling because I see this over and over again, is they're forcing everything to be an event and everything to be asynchronous. It doesn't need to be. Events, they're like throwing a note into a room and hoping somebody reads it. Not really what you're talking about there is publish, subscribe, and that's the point. Events are facts, something that's actually happened. If you publish a message, you as the producer don't care if there are any consumers. So there's no guarantee that a consumer is up. You don't even care that there are any consumers, that the message is out malformed. It can't be malformed. You're the owner of the schema of producing that message. The downstream service has actually did its job. Again, you don't care as the producer. And there's two pain points here. It's because not everything needs to be asynchronous or should be, and not everything is an event. Commands are about invoking behavior. They're owned by the consumer because there's only a single boundary that should be the consumer of that command. There could be many different senders depending on how you kind of view boundaries. And they're named in verbs because they're something, again, they're actions or things that you want to invoke. Events are totally different. They're facts. Something's happened. You're notifying some other part of your system. Something happened. They're owned by who's publishing them because the event has occurred in one particular boundary, that specific boundary, so there's only going to be one publisher of it. Now, for consumers, like I mentioned, there may be no consumers. Maybe there's a thousand. You as a publisher, doesn't really matter. There's going to be zero to many different consumers. There's only a single publisher and events are named in the past tense because there's something, they're facts, that things that have occurred. Commands and events have different utility. They're very different. And not everything needs to be asynchronous, just like not everything needs to be an event. There's some things that are just naturally need to be synchronous, like queries. In their example before, all their HTTP calls, of course, are synchronous. They are calling different services to perform different actions. You have to pick and understand what can be fire forget and one might not be best served that way if you immediately need a response. But there's also the option of doing asynchronous requests and replies if you need it. And the way that works is you just have a separate reply queue, which the author of this post mentioned that they actually did, except they did it all the time, which they probably didn't need to. But the idea be is you're making a request, some type of where you actually need to know the response of did it succeed? What was the outcome of that asynchronous processing? So we have service B that's actually processing that message. Once it completes it, it provides a reply message to a separate queue that the original service can pick up and understand, okay, that was the, related to the original message that I processed. Here's the outcome. Problem number four, eventual consistency is like eventual accountability. I love these titles. So let's say an order flows through four services. Order places, reduces the inventory. Inventory reserved, charges the payment. Payment success sends the confirmation email. If any step fails, you need, you need to compensate. Yes, compensating action. So restock, uh, refund the payment, or cancel the email. Absolutely, this is a problem to try to do all that coordination about if this fails, what do I do next? How do I do that compensating action? The saga pattern, which I have a link in the description, explains what it is, is the solution to this in kind of an asynchronous world. However, if you're in a synchronous world, this isn't any easier at all. Think about yourself of having a long procedural code base of try catches of calling different services and what that nested mess looks like. It's kind of the same issue. The benefit of it being asynchronous is dead letter queues, visibility knowing it happening, as well as kind of state behind that saga of knowing if it's complete or not. Again, we go back to visibility and tooling. Problem number five, testing became a nightmare. Unit tests were fine, but integration tests? Now they needed spinning up embedded Kafka, mocking consumers and producers, and waiting for asynchronous side effects. That pain is trying to test everything across boundaries. Remember, events are contracts. 
They're not conversations. They don't go two ways. That's the distinction again between events and commands. Are you trying to invoke something? Or are you just trying to tell some other part of your system that something happened? From a producer's point of view, it's are you actually publishing the message that you're supposed to? That's the test. From a consumer's point of view, you're testing, am I actually consuming and handling and processing that message correctly? Event-driven architecture isn't your architecture. It's just a part of it. It's not a full system replacement where you replace all your HTTP calls with asynchronous events. That's not the case at all. There's a combination of synchronous, asynchronous, events, commands. There's a combination of all these things. It's about outcomes and what you're trying to accomplish, not just following patterns. And of course, my favorite part, if you've been burned by event-driven architecture, applying it maybe where you shouldn't, get the comments and let me know what happened. And if you enjoy topics like this around software architecture design, and you appreciate my channel, you can join it. The link's in the description. You also get access to a private Discord server. It, just if you appreciate the channel, I appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to get in the comments because sometimes they turn into videos themselves. And as always, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.